in and guide me. Christ as a shield overshadowing. Christ under me. Christ over me. Christ beside me on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield. Beside me on my left and my In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good evening to you all, and welcome. Those of you who join us in the chapel this evening, but also welcome to those who join us on our parish webcam, and also on our Holy Family Parish Facebook page. Particular welcome to the parish of Ennis Diamond in West Clare. Uh, Father Des Ford normally has the rosary at this time on a Sunday evening, uh, but he's encouraging those who join him for the rosary to tune in on Facebook and join us here in Holy Family Parish in Belfast uh, this evening. A welcome to you and welcome to all those in other parts of the world who join us on this first Sunday of Advent. Our theme tonight is the theme of hope. And our preacher this evening is Reverend Martin White. Deacon Martin recently retired as the head teacher of St. Oliver Plunkett Primary School in, uh, near Tomb and ministers in the cathedral parish here in the city. He's also a leader of the RCIA team in our diocese who work with adults on their journey to entering their Catholic faith. And so we begin with our opening prayer. Loving God, you fill all things with a fullness and hope that we can never comprehend. Thank you for leading us into a time where more of reality is being unveiled for all of us to see. We pray tonight that you will take away our natural temptation for cynicism, denial, fear and despair. Help us have the courage to awaken to greater truth, greater humility, and greater care for one another. May we place our hope in what matters and what lasts, trusting in your eternal presence and love. Listen to our heart's longings for the healing of our suffering world. Knowing, good God, you are hearing us better than we are speaking. We offer our prayers this evening in all the holy names of God. Amen. Amen. This is the first week of Advent. Advent means coming. And in this season, we prepare for the coming of the presence of Jesus Christ. One of the ways we prepare our hearts for his coming is by making an Advent wreath and lighting its candles. This reminds us of some of the gifts Jesus brings to the world. Hope, peace, joy and love. The Advent wreath itself is in the shape of a circle. A circle has no beginning and no end. 
This reminds us that there is no beginning and no end to God and that God's love and caring are forever. The light from the candles, which grows stronger each week in Advent, reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. Tonight, we light the candle of hope. A hope is different from a wish. Wishes may or may not come true, but real hope in Christ is sure and certain. Whatever God promises, he will do. The people of Israel hoped in God's promises and were not disappointed. Again and again, God delivered Israel from its enemies. We too have the same experience of salvation. That is why we believe in God's promise to send Jesus to us once again to judge the world and establish his kingdom forever upon the earth. Hope is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Creative of God, breath of li- all life, through whom all things are created and sustained, all sons and daughters, flocks and herds, all birds of the air and fish of the sea. You walked this earth as child and creator. You touched the soil, quenched your thirst, embraced this world, brought life and light, love and laughter into dark and death-filled lives. Creative God, breath of all life, through whom all things are created and sustained, we bring to you our sacrifice of a contrite and willing heart. O come, thou wisdom from on high, who orders all things mightily, to us the path of knowledge show and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come again and with us ever dwell. Good evening, everybody. Just like to thank for the invitation to come here this evening. Um, The reading this evening is from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 18. And it's a very short, it's actually the introductory antiphon at some of the midnight masses. And there's a wee second part of the reading added on. It's, It's from chapter 19. And the theme is that the Red Sea became an unimpeded way as God saved his people from slavery in Egypt through the the word that came down from heaven. When peaceful silence lay over all and night had run the half of her swift course, down from the heavens, from the royal throne, leapt your all-powerful word into the heart of a doomed land the stern warrior leapt. For to keep your children from all harm, the whole creation obedient to your commands, was once more and newly fashioned into its nature. Overshadowing the camp, there was the cloud. Where water had been, dry land was seen to rise. The Red Sea became an unimpeded way. The tempestuous flood, a green plain, sheltered by your hand, the whole nation passed across, gazing at these amazing miracles. They were like horses at pasture, They skipped like lambs, singing your praises, Lord, their deliverer. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
the theme this evening of the, of the candle that we've lit is hope. And one of the things that struck me as I thought about this talk was why of the four themes of Lent does hope come first? I would have thought the way we connect with God is firstly by really appreciating how much we're loved by him and how much he's done for us. And from that springs our sense of joy, that profound sense of delight in how much God cares for us and wants us to help everyone. And then we flow peace, that deep sense, as Julian of Norwich put it, that all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. And then hope emerges because we know we are loved, we can rejoice in confidence and experience peace even in the midst of difficulties. And yet, here we are today, this evening, starting with hope. Why would that be? I think we have to go back to the Garden of Eden, where humanity is given everything, but told not to eat the fruit in the center of the garden. And under influence of evil, we go our own way, and with original sin and the fall, all the evils that exist flow into the world. But God, being a loving God, does not cut himself off of humanity, and is constantly trying to restore the situation. The Old Testament, then, is God's various attempts to help his people become peaceful and have their lives restored, none of which, whether from the flood, the patriarchs, the prophets, or the kings, really succeed. Nevertheless, there's an underlying promise through Scripture that at some point, when the world is ready, that God will send a Savior who will deliver his people from sin and slavery. So how does this connect up with hope? Hope has been been defined as to expect with confidence, to cherish a desire with anticipation. It's an anticipatory emotion, meaning the desire, not in an anxious way, but with the expectation of fulfillment. And the Advent season then is one filled with the message of hope found in Jesus, the saviour of the world. Yet for many, this time of year highlights the hopelessness and despair they feel inside, whether from the loss of a loved one, loneliness, poverty and bills, or even from this materialistic view of Christmas, which ends up quite empty. But the scriptures help explain hope and how it can help us in the difficulties of life, especially at this time of year. First of all, we're told hope is a gift. That inner strength for difficult times is not something we need to ask, pray, or wait for. We already have it. It was given to us by the Holy Spirit at baptism, as St. Paul says in the Romans, letter to the Romans, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So hope works to give us confidence in the other gifts, such as joy, peace, and love. It's not just a feeling, but a disposition, an attitude based on what we know about God. What we need to do is realize that hope is already here with us and begin to unwrap the gift already at hand. Another aspect of hope is hope is not what we can see. Sometimes it's difficult to find hope in a situation. And the Bible says that true hope is unseen, but that does not mean it's unreal. The confidence we have in God is usually based on two things. Firstly, the nature of God himself. As St. John tells us in the Gospel, God is love. Secondly, we look back at our own experiences And when we forget the great as well as the small and the kind things that God has done for us, we forget his care, compassion, and deep love. But if we remember and are grateful for what he has done, then it's easier to be hopeful for things that have not happened yet. It's that simple. In school, we used to present the children with rewards at the end of each month. It was a wee primary school. And one of them was for excellence in homework. There were others such as math and literacy, but homework was also identified as different because this was the work a child had to do at home on their own. And I think hope is a bit like that. It's a gift that we have to live out when we seem to be on our own. Our ability to do that reflects how well we have grasped the other aspects of God, those other gifts, namely that he is love, loves us totally and without reservation, and is with us always, even when he seems to be absent. As St. Paul again says to the Romans, for in hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? Another thing scriptures tells us is that we can be confident about hope. We take it for granted that gravity will hold us in our chair and that exercise will keep us heavily, or keep us healthy, sorry. 
And we're confident because these are natural laws. Others have told us about them and we've experienced them ourselves. Likewise, there are other things that we can trust without seeing. We know what God is like from our own experiences, from those of others, and getting to know him more in prayer. Although we can't see it, we can be full of hope and confident because love is God's very essence. We can find rest and confidence when we hope and rest in this love. As St. Paul says in the Hebrews, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. God com- hope comes from God alone. Sometimes we put hope in things in which there is no hope that let us down. A car or material things can bring us a feeling of contentment and exhilaration, but not true hope. A spouse or a good friend can't bring us hope because their abilities are limited. True hope only comes from the one who created hope, God. It comes by trusting God's love even when when circumstances are difficult. It is our chance to do the homework to put into practice ourselves what we've already learned about God and about life. And again from the Romans it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of his Holy Spirit. Another important aspect is that hope endures. Hoping in God will never let us leave, lead us into despair, because he has a plan for all of us who look to him. He has a future that is full of hope, In Proverbs, it tells us, there is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Perhaps hope comes at the start of Advent, because we are remembering that the promises that the people of God in the Old Testament waited hundreds of years for were answered. But it was in a little baby, in a stable, in Bethlehem. In recreating this waiting at Advent, we are reminding ourselves that although we are all waiting for the return of Jesus on the last day, God is reliable, that we can wait and hope with certainty and confidence. One of the things I notice about our candidates at RCIA, and these are people who have decided they want to enter the Catholic Church, is that they are all on a personal journey of faith and are waiting for the reception of the sacraments which will make them full members of the Church. But they do this with amazing enthusiasm and commitment and are so overjoyed on the day that the bishop baptizes them or administers confirmation and Holy Communion to them. They themselves are living beacons of hope and in turn inspire hope in those who are able to attend the special Mass. Just ask anyone who's been to one of those Masses. It is amazing. Hope inspires hope and is always fulfilled. The Jews saw time as moving purposefully, that the past was preparation for a definite future that was God was going to accomplish. In St. Luke's Gospel today at Mass, Jesus himself speaks about God's plan, that it will be fulfilled, and that the kingdom of God is near. He says, stay awake, praying at all times for the strength to survive at all that is going to happen, and to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. And that is what our reading this evening is reminding us of. The word leaps down in the midst of darkness to bring help to a doomed land. Now the author originally was writing about how God intervened to save the Jews from the Egyptians who were pursuing them across the Red Sea. But he's also talking about God's future intervention through Jesus. The word of God brought this salvation to earth in the darkness of the night. God made man in the womb of the Virgin Mary, was led in a manger in Bethlehem and adored by shepherds and magi. He came this time not to exterminate violent enemies of his chosen people, but to save the land that was doomed, which means the whole world, including everyone that has ever existed, past, present, or future. This prophecy has been read in Christian liturgy, often at midnight mass, for many, many years. It places the incarnation in the context of global history, as Jesus the Word breaks through in the silence of God, the gentle silence enveloped all things, we're told. The Bible, an inspired compilation written over hundreds of years, tracing the development of God's relationship with his people and their journey, is also a guide to help us through the ups and downs of our pilgrim journey of life. On the day that this extract from wisdom is read at Mass, the Gospel acclamation, interestingly from the letter of James, says... A 
Accept and submit to the word which has been planted in you and can save your souls. So if we wish to cooperate with what God wants to do to restore creation, surely we simply need to listen. Perhaps for this Advent we could ask ourselves, do I listen to that word? A famous writer has also described silence as God's first language. So another question is, can I learn to listen in silence? To sit in the silence and hear what God is saying. Many spiritual writers emphasize the importance of prayer as the pathway to growth and peace. Most biblical heroes show themselves flawed and weak. What makes them heroic is the honesty of their search for the divine within us and in all things, and their total reliance on the grace of God. The reading tonight emphasizes how close Jesus comes to the earth, to our community, the church, to us as individuals. The experience of many saints like St. Therese of Lisieux and Mother Teresa shows us that closeness means entering into prayer and then trusting the inner experience we have within that prayer. Holiness is not just a matter of intellect and will, but of developing trust in that inner conversation of love. If we begin with the positive about life, that all that is good comes from God, and get the core issue of who we really are absolutely clear, that we are his beloved children. The rest of the journey in life, even though it isn't always easy, is by far more natural, more beautiful, more joyful, and all-inclusive. What else should our journey be? Our role as members of God's family is one of proclaiming the great gift of who God is, who we, his people, are, and of what God promises everyone in the world. All of this is hope, perfectly hidden at the heart of all creation from the very beginning, then perfectly revealed 2,000 years ago in a tiny baby on a bed of hay in a stone cave stable in Bethlehem, and then revealed again this night 2,000 years later in the blessed sacrament on this altar, and in the hearts and minds of all who are gathered here and online to pray and open their hearts to our living God, to open their hearts to hope, love, joy, and peace.
So taking the words that Deacon Martin said to us, we spend a few moments in silence with our hearts open and hear what God has to say to us.
Deacon Martin will now lead us in our intercessions and our responses. Hear the prayers of our hearts. Hear the prayers of our our hearts. hearts. Just imagine throwing a pebble into the center of a pond. The circles of ripples that move out from the center. So this evening we pray firstly for those closest to us. Our immediate family, closest friends for their health, needs, joys and fears. God of creation, God of salvation, hear the prayers prayers of of our our hearts. We pray for our extended family and friends whom we might not see each week for their love and concern, for their well-being, for all their special intentions. God of creation, God of salvation, hear Hear the prayers prayers of our our hearts. As the ripples reach out towards the land, we pray for those we only have contact with annually or less for a blessing this Advent time. We pray for those who are living abroad. Anyone whom we live with and have damaged our relationships with. God of creation, God of salvation, hear the the prayers prayers of our hearts. And as the ripples reach their furthest points, we pray for this whole world and its people, for the needs of this week and the future, for those most at risk, those most in need, especially those who feel they have lost hope. God of creation, God of salvation, who speaks to us through the thunder and whisper, who loves us as if there were but one of us to love, hear Hear the the prayers prayers of of our hearts. And at this time of prayer, we place all of our needs, all of the desires of our hearts into the hands of our Blessed Mother. And Deacon Martin will now lead us in a decade of the rosary. We'll say the descent of the Holy Spirit, that the Lord may descend once again at this special time and has filled his children with hope, with joy, with love and peace and inspire them to be his messengers to the whole of creation. The descent of the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and ever shall be, be world without end. end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Save us, Lord, while we are awake, protect us while we sleep, that we may keep watch with Christ and rest with him in peace. At last, last all-powerful all master, master, you give, give leave to your servant to go in peace according, according to your promise. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all nations, the light to enlighten the Gentiles, and give glory to Israel, your people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, is now and ever, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Save, Save us, Lord, while we are awake. Protect us while we sleep, that we may keep watch with Christ and rest with him in peace. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, creator of the changes of day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent. Increase our hope. Continue to stir up hope in our hearts. As you have protected us in the day that is past, so be with us in the coming night. Keep us from every sin, every evil, and every fear. For you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be glory for endless ages. Amen. Amen.
ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly exile here until the sun. 